Do you want to learn how to attract more kinds of birds to your backyard? I'm going to show you how with a homemade suet recipe that has peanut butter as the key ingredient. The two important ingredients in the suet are peanut butter and animal fat. Peanut butter because birds like nuts. Animal fat because birds are insect eaters and insects are animals. The other ingredients are all high in energy and nutritious. So this is what we need. We need beef fat. And this is, uh, I rendered this beef fat and so that's one pint. We need peanut butter and this is natural creamy peanut butter that I got at Aldi. We need corn meal, which this is homemade corn meal that I made in a blender. I just took chopped corn and blended it. Good old fashioned white flour and quick oats. And as you can see, the quick oats are chopped up finer than old fashioned oats. And I also got these at Aldi. So the first thing we do is we combine the fat and the peanut butter in a stock pot. So you want a big stock pot. I took the beef fat and put it in the microwave for one minute just to melt it. So I pour that in the stock pot. And we put our heat on low, not medium low, but low because this stuff burns pretty easily. So that's the beef fat. Next we're going to put in the peanut butter. And this is the part that is less than easy to do, I think. So you scoop out the peanut butter. So it's a silicon spatula to get out the last bits of uh, peanut butter out of the jar. Let's get our peanut butter kind of mixed into this oil. We'll let this warm up. I usually let it warm up for five or ten minutes and then turn it off and then just add the dry ingredients. Measure the dry ingredients. And we need two cups of the white flour. I'm using a one cup measuring cup. So there's our two cups of flour, four cups of oatmeal, one cup, two cups, three cups, and four. And then we need four cups of our cornmeal. And I'm just putting it in this big mixing bowl just so we can kind of mix it around and get the dry ingredients mixed. So one cup, two cups, three cups, four cups. And you can see the consistency of this, um, I call it homemade cornmeal. It's, it's pretty gritty, but it's kind of like corn flour. I'm just going to use a wooden spoon to just kind of get this stuff mixed up a little bit. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I feel the pan is warm. I'm turning off the stove. You can see the consistency of the, of the uh, fat and peanut butter mixture. So now we're going to add our dry ingredients and I just add a couple cups at a time. So add a couple cups, mix it in. So you can see it's starting to, you can see the chunkiness of the suet mixture. Add a couple more cups, spill some on the stove. I'm pretty good at making messes. And you can see it's starting to get thicker. Add a couple more cups. And really this is nice. You really only dirty one pan when you're making this. 
So now you can see it's getting a lot thicker. And it's, you know, the pan stays warm. You do not cook it. Do not think about cooking it. You're just warming it up a little bit. The first time I made this, I had the stove on too high and it immediately burnt the peanut butter. I still used it, but I know I keep stressing, but low heat right at the beginning, just for like five minutes. Now look at the consistency of it. It almost looks like something you could eat and it actually smells like something you could eat. I'm just gonna dump the rest of this in. And this little bit that I spilled on the stove, I'll scoop in and we'll mix it up. And now you can see it's starting to get a pretty thick consistency. And I find it amazing how much dry ingredients you put in to the small amount of fat and peanut butter and it really soaks it up. And that's it. It's done. Now, it'll harden when it cools. It won't get real hard, but it'll harden a bit. So I just let it cool. And then what I do is I just take an old bread sack, roll it out, and I'll just put, once this is cool, I'll put it in the bread sack and I can store it in the fridge or I just store it at room temperature because I go through it so fast because the birds love it. I think once you start making this, you will never buy suet again because you'll find that, that the birds just love it. So this is the finished suet after it's cooled and then I just shape it into balls because I find it easier to work with. Um, there's a number of ways we can serve it. One way is we just take a dish, it's a bird feeding dish, and just crumble the suet up into little pieces. And a lot of birds um, will prefer to eat it that way because they're not really the type of bird that would cling to a tree. But the other great way is with a suet log. And so you just drill holes in a log and you stuff the suet in. You can see it's, it's kind of like clay. So you stuff it in there real tight and then you just hang that. It's got a hook on it and you hang it from a hook. Um, probably the most traditional way of serving it is in a suet cage or suet basket and I just kind of flatten out the suet and pop it in there. I really don't use this method that often because the birds like the suet log. The other way that I've just discovered is sprinkling the suet on the ground because there's a lot of ground feeding birds that prefer to eat it that way like you'll find juncos and tree sparrows will eat it this way as well as brown thrashers, robins. Um, the suet log works best for woodpeckers. All the woodpeckers love this. But the brown creeper also will only eat off this for the most part. And then the suet basket works for birds that can cling to the basket to eat it. Well, thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you liked it, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, share the video with friends who might be interested in it. Uh, leave a comment and give it a thumbs up. I'm going to put a link up here for the suet recipe. And I'll see you next time on the Backyard Birds channel. Thanks.